Hi, and welcome to our Quick Start tutorial series, where we'll be showing you how to make the most out of Script Studio. Today, we'll be showing you how to format your screenplay. The layout of screenplays differs from other writing mediums and has developed from the early days of Hollywood into an industry standard format. In this example of a movie script page, we can see how it is divided into sections to provide the reader with an easy read. Note the space around sections and the typical limit of around four lines of text for each descriptive paragraph. A screen story is divided into multiple scenes and each of these scenes is essentially a location where that part of the story takes place. The start of a scene is indicated by a scene heading, sometimes known in screenwriting slang as a slug line or slug. Each scene heading must appear on a single line and tells us whether it's inside or outside, where the scene takes place, and the time of day. Almost all scene headings begin with INT, which is an abbreviation of interior, or EXT for exterior. But there are some exceptions, and we recommend you download some of the many free screenplay PDFs available on the web. So, let's create our first scene using Script Studio. Type the letter I, and you'll see that Script Studio automatically displays an autocomplete menu that includes the term INT. You can use your arrow keys or mouse to navigate the list, but we're just going to hit the Tab key. As you can see, INT has now been completed, and the cursor is moved to the next position where we need to enter the location. Let's type Downtown Bar. Scene headings must always appear in uppercase, but Script Studio automatically handles this for you, so you don't have to keep turning the caps lock on and off. Now we have the location, we need to state the time of day. So just hit the Tab key, and you'll see the autocomplete menu appears again with some predefined choices. We'll select Night by typing the letter N, and then hitting Return. This completes our scene heading and moves the cursor to a new line and paragraph in the action element, ready for us to write our scene description. We can see what element we are using on the status bar, and also what element would follow if we were to hit either Tab or Return. And we can easily change the current element from the status bar element menu. For now, we're going to stay in action and write, Jack enters and glances around. The place is quiet with only a few regulars. He heads over to the bar and signals the bartender. As you can see, we've introduced the bartender in capital letters, since this is the first time he's appeared in the script, and he'll have a speaking part. Hit Tab, and the cursor is automatically placed in the correct position to enter our character name, Bartender. Again, Script Studio automatically capitalizes the name for you. Hit Return, and the cursor moves to the correct position for us to enter his dialogue. What can I get you? Hit Return, and enter Jack then return again and his response, whiskey. Hit return again, and this time you'll see that because we've already entered the bartender once, Script Studio remembers and suggests the name for the next speaking part. Hit return to accept this suggestion and enter the bartender's response, sure thing. Now our conversation is over. We want to write some action description, and there are two ways of doing this. You can either hit return, and then change the element to action from the element menu in the status bar, or use a keyboard shortcut. When you hold down the control key on Windows or command key on Mac, you'll see a list of numbered shortcuts in the status bar. Since we want to move to an action element, we'll need to keep the control or command key held down and hit the two key. This moves the cursor over to the correct position for us to start typing our action. You can use the same keyboard shortcut but also hold down the Shift key to stay on the same paragraph and change it to a different element. Let's type Jack sighs deeply as the bartender pours his drink, something heavy weighing on his mind. Now we want to move to a new location in time, so we'll need to create a new scene. But before we write a new scene heading, we need to exit the current scene by indicating the change with a transition. Again, you can do this several ways, either by hitting Return and then return again to display the pop-up elements menu, which displays each available element and a shortcut letter. Typing T will move the cursor over to the right of the page for you to write your transition. Or you can also select Transition from the element menu. Or type Cut To, followed by a colon. 
When you enter the colon, the text automatically formats the line into a transition element and moves over to the correct position on the page. There are many other transitions available such as Dissolve To, Fade To, and Match Cut, depending on how you want the scene transition to feel. Our Screenwriting Glossary lists many of these, with definitions of over 250 screenwriting and filmmaking terms. Let's go back to our dialogue and take a look at a couple of other things, extensions and parentheticals. If you place the cursor at the end of a character name and hit the Tab key, the Autocomplete menu displays a list of available extensions such as VO for voiceover or OS to indicate that the character is speaking off screen. And when writing dialogue, you can also tab to a parenthetical element which allows you to indicate how a character is supposed to say a line such as surly or whispers, etc. Parentheticals, also known as Rileys, are used to either express an attitude for the actor who is speaking or to indicate who they are speaking to, if it is not obvious. They should be short and to the point, and only used when absolutely necessary, and never used to describe anything about the scene or the character's behavior. For instance, if the speaking character pauses between their dialogue to slam their fist on the table or sip their drink, that needs to be written as an action line. You can sometimes use beat between lines of dialogue spoken by the same character to create a pause for dramatic effect but it's generally better to write a more descriptive action line instead to create mood or tension. Script Studio encourages you to initially build your story outline as a series of steps, with multiple scenes in each step, allowing you to work on the script for each step independently within the full context of your screenplay and page count. In full script mode, you can scroll through your entire script yet still retain its step structure as indicated by the step numbers in the scene list. Clicking on a scene in the list will automatically take you to that point in your script. And if you're working on a production draft, you can even display scene numbers on your script and in the scene list by selecting Scene Numbering from the Format menu. And when you want to switch back to Step Mode, double-click on a scene row. As you can see, Script Studio takes the hassle out of formatting your screenplay, allowing you to focus on what matters, the story. That's it for today's tutorial, but you can watch many more quick start videos at scriptstudio.com slash tutorials. Thanks for watching and be sure to visit scriptstudio.com to download your free trial today.